Hi, my name is Dr. John Latham, and I'm an online tutor for TutorHero.net. I received my PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I offer tutoring in a range of different chemistry and biology subjects that are listed here. And today I'm going to go through a chemistry problem to show you what the experience of doing online tutoring with TutorHero.net is like. So let's get started. So I have a problem here that I got from a textbook, and this is a titration problem. And I picked this because they're a little bit tricky, um, the problems. It's based on a molarity, um, but it's the reaction or a titration of uh, two different chemicals, in this case, sodium hydroxide with uh, sulfuric acid. So let's read through this problem. One commercial method used to peel potatoes is to soak them in a solution of sodium hydroxide for a short time. Remove them from the sodium hydroxide and spray off the peel. The concentration of sodium hydroxide is normally in the range of 3 molar to 6 molar in this process. The sodium hydroxide is analyzed periodically. In one such analysis, 45.7 mils of 0.5 molar sulfuric acid is required to react completely with 20 mil sample of sodium hydroxide. So what is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide? So in this problem, what they're doing is to try to figure out what the concentration of sodium hydroxide is, is they do a titration with a known concentration of sulfuric acid, in this case 0.5 molar. And that way, using a titration, um, what you know about titrations, you can figure out what is the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So you generally, um, for most chemistry problems, the first thing you want to do is to always write out the chemical equation. That would be my first tip for uh, solving this problem. So let me write that out here. First, always write out the chemical equation. This will save you a lot of headache down the road. And so let me write that out. You have two, let's see, you have uh, sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide, and that results in so sodium sulfate and water. There it is. So this brings me to my second tip for solving this equation, which is whether the equation is balanced. Because if you don't check to see if the equation is balanced, this can possibly lead to problems down the road and that your answer might be wrong. So let's take a look at this uh, equation. And let's see if uh, anything is imbalanced in this equation. And I can see right away that SO4 and SO4, those are the same on both sides of the equation. But right here, um, this, there's only one sodium on the left side of the equation, and there's two sodiums here on the right side. So this equation isn't balanced. So let's figure out how to balance this. So since there's two on the right side, let's just write a two here before that, and let's see if this now balances. So I have two sodiums, two oxygens, and two hydrogens on this side. And I have two hydrogens, a, a sulfate, and four oxygens on this side. And I can see that I have too few hydrogens on this side. I only have two hydrogens, and here I have four hydrogens and five oxygens. Oh, sorry, six oxygens, because it's times two. So it can be tricky. So I need to also multiply the number of hydrogens, the number of waters by two as well. 
So now all the different um, sides of the equation are balanced. So, and then in this type of problem, what I like to do then is to figure out what is it that we know. So, what we know in this problem is that we have 45.7 mils of 0.5 molar H2SO4. And we have 20 mils of sodium hydroxide. So I like to do this because this gets it from the mess of all of this, these words up here in this word problem. And just lets you look at this right here. This is what we have. We have 45.7 mils and we have 20 mils and then we have 0.5 molar H2SO4 and we don't know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. So that brings me up to the fourth point is to ask what is it that we don't know or what is the problem asking? So in this case, I just said it. What we don't know is the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. And let's look at that back in the question. Yes, that's asking what is the concentration of sodium hydroxide? And concentration in this case means what is the molarity? Because the concentration is the molarity. Concentration equals molarity right there. So what this problem is asking is, what is the molarity of sodium hydroxide? So how do we do that? The first step is to convert the molarity to moles. So we only have one molarity, which is 0.5 molar sulfuric acid. So let's find how many moles of sulfuric acid there is. And we can do this because we have the molarity and we have the volume, the amount of sulfuric acid. So the moles of H2SO4 is equal to 0.5 moles per liter. And where did I get the moles per liter from? Well, molarity is equal to moles per liter. So this 0.5 moles over liters is exactly the same as 0.5 molar. So let me move this out of the way and I'll continue writing this equation. So how do you convert from moles? Well, we know that uh, one liter is equal to a thousand mils. So if you multiply this and you get mils, and then multiply this by 45.7 mils, That is equal to point zero two two eight moles of sulfuric acid. So let's check this to make sure we did this equation properly. And the way I always do this is I cross out my units to see if I have, in this case, 
just moles left because I want moles and I started with molarity, which is moles over liters. So I want to make sure when I did my calculation by multiplying by this volumes, all I have left in the equation is moles. So let me do that. So liters on the denominator with liters on the numerator of the next one cross out, mills and mills cross out, and all I have left is moles, which is what I wanted. So I set up this problem correctly because sometimes students can make mistakes where they invert um, one of these um, fractions and put, you know, mills on top over liters or um, they divide by 45.7 mils instead of multiply by 45.7 mils in this case. So by crossing out your units and always writing them when you do these problems really helps you make sure that you end up with the units that you want when you start the problem. So that's a trick that I suggest in these type of problems. Okay. So now we have the number of moles of sulfuric acid. But the problem asks, what is the molarity of sodium hydroxide? So how do we convert the amount of moles of sulfuric acid to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide? Well, that's why we wrote out the um, chemical equation here, because this tells us what the relationship between the number of moles of sulfuric acid is to sodium hydroxide. So when you look at this, what this says, if you read this a different way, is because there's no units outside of the sulfuric acid, what that is saying is you take one mole of sulfuric acid and you add it to two moles of sodium hydroxide. That results in one mole of sodium sulfate and two moles of, of water. So for every, excuse me, for every mole of sulfuric acid, you need two moles of sodium hydroxide. So let's write that out in an equation. So just what I said, one mole of sulfuric acid equals two moles of sodium hydroxide in this equation. So let's write this out. moles of sodium hydroxide which is 0 0.0228 moles and then you multiply that by the ratio of moles of sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide and that is what you get right there. So the moles of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0, that should be another 2 in there, 228 moles of sulfuric acid times 2 moles of sodium hydroxide and 1 mole of sulfuric acid. And if you do the math, that is equal to 0 0.0456 moles of sodium hydroxide. So let's check this just like we did up above and see if we did this properly by crossing out the units. So that's why when I did this problem, I put moles and I put which, uh, which chemical I was using. In this case, I started out with sulfuric acid and I end up with sodium hydroxide. So let's cross that out and make sure we did that correctly. So moles of H2SO4 and the denominator, one mole of H2SO4 is equal to two moles of sodium hydroxide, which is in the numerator. And so I shouldn't have crossed that out. So what we have left in this problem is moles of sodium hydroxide, which is what we want. So we set up the problem correctly. All right. So 
finally, we have to go from the number of moles of sodium hydroxide to the molarity, because that's what the problem is asking us. What is the molarity? And what we know is that we have 20 mils of sodium hydroxide in the sample. So in this case, we have the moles and we have the volume, and so we can set that up fairly simply. Remember, moles per liter is equal to molarity. So moles over per liter, moles over liter. So all we need to do is take this and divide this by the amount of sodium hydroxide. So let's do that. which we have right here. So the molarity of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0456 moles of sodium hydroxide over 20.0 mils of solution. So now we can see um, that that's not correct because molarity is moles per liter. And here the problem gave us 20.0 mils. So we have to convert the mils to liter in order to get molarity. So let's do that before we do the rest of the math. So 1,000 mils over 1 liter. And that is equal to 2.28 molar. All right, let's uh, cross out the units again just to make sure we set it up right. So we had mills in the denominator here, mills in the numerator there. And so moles over liter, which is what we know is equal to molarity. So we have 2.28 molar sodium hydroxide. That's the answer to the solution.